Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to the third part of the clinical round uh, revision. Uh, we start with the episiotomy. Types this operation is named episiotomy. This is a midline episiotomy. This is a medial lateral episiotomy of a right handed surgeon, and this is a uh, medial lateral episiotomy of left handed surgeon. Episiotomy is indicated when there is overstretch of the perineum on crowning of the fetal head. Uh, episiotomy is indicated to avoid unplanned tear in the perineum because the tear may cut the external inner sphincter and may also tear the anterior wall of the rectum uh, which is a, 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 a complication more aggressive than the episiotomy. Episiotomy is not indicated in all cases of vaginal delivery. It is indicated only when there is a rigid perineum uh, or the, op the perineum is overstretched and for uh, uh, and, and we are afraid or afraid to uh, tear the anterior uh, uh, wall or uh, tear the sphincter. Uh, we come to this, what is this uh, 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 scale lab model? This is the, the placenta, the this is the maternal surface of the placenta, and this is the umbilical cord, and this is the uh, 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 uterine side of the placenta with cotyledons. With cotyledons, the maternal surface is covered with. A, a amniotic a membrane. The placenta is an endocrinological organ. It produces many hormones that maintain pregnancy and maintain the homeostasis of the uh, fetus and pregnancy. Mention the instrument used in the DNC and give the use of H. Mention the indication of each of the following. The uh, 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 instruments used in the DNC include <coughs> uh, a vaginal speculum or a tractor to visualize the external cervical loss. Uh, a cervical dilator, uh, a cervical tenaculum to uh, m uh, to fix the uh, cervix during the process of uh, sounding and dilatation, and lastly, a, a, a uterine curate to uh, uh, to take the endometrial sample. Mention the indication of each of the following vaginal specula. Uh, Self-retaining a uh, casco speculum, all the vaginal procedures that are used uh, uh, on uh, outpatient paces can use casco speculum, such as uh, visualization of the uh, cervix, visualization of the side walls of the vagina, because the anterior and posterior uh, anterior, uh, vaginal walls are obscured by the uh, plates of the speculum, except in certain types of casco speculum which are fenestrated through the fenestra, fenestrum of the plate, we can see this uh, part of the anterior vaginal wall, and some disposable casco speculums are uh, this are transparent plastic specula, and we can give an idea or take an idea about the anterior and posterior vaginal wall through uh, transparent plates. Uh, uh, also, uh, casco speculum can be used for visualization of the portion of the cervix, can be used during uh, taking a cytology from the cervix and the upper vagina, can be used when uh, we uh, uh, introduce uh, something into the uterus through the, through the cervix, such as a uh, trying sound in the uh, device, and so on. 
self-retaining vaginal oval speculum. It is used under anesthesia. It's used under anesthesia because of its large size. And it is used for uh, uh, vaginal operations such as anterior uh, repair, anterior vaginal repair in, uh, in uh, anterior corporophy in, uh, or uh, uh, ma management of zycovaginal fistula and it may be used in uh, DNC under anesthesia uh, uh, and so on. Same speculum it is used for uh, for uh, visualization of the anterior vaginal wall, especially in zycovaginal fistula. Also, we can use same speculum as a vaginal tractor in uh, gynecological operations. These are the instruments of the NCI that I uh, have mentioned uh, uh, before. This is the casco speculum for visualization of the cervix or this is a same speculum, saying a bleed same speculum. This is uh, uh, the uterine sound, and this is a uterine, a uterine di a cervical dilator, a dilator, single sided, but uh, one side cervical dilator, and this is uh, the uh, uh, uterine, uh, this is the uterine curate. Mention three uses of each of the following instruments. Uterine sound, uh, a measurement of the cervical uterine canal, getting the idea, an idea about the antiversion flexion, direction of the uterus, uh, 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 to explore the interior of the uterus uh, for uh, polypi or, 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 or missed, uh, missed uh, intrauterine IOT. Uh, Hager's dilator uh, for the uh, Hager's dilator are used for cervical dilatation. Cervical dilation is used prior to uh, operations such as uh, the uterine curettage, the DNCD for dilatation, C for curettage, uh, for um, uh, further gill operation. Uh, poly vaginal polypectomy of intrauterine polypi. Higher, higher dilators, uh, dilatation of the cervix should not exceed the, uh, the size 8 because if we exceed the size 8 Higher, 8 millimeters, the uh, 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 in, uh, cervical incompetence is a complication of this operation. Single to uh, cervical uh, tunaculum to stabilize the to stabilize the uh, the uterus and cervix during dilation or uh, insertion of intrauterine in in instrument or intrauterine IUD. Endometrial curette to take uterine uh, endometrial uh, biopsy. Screw cervical cannula, olive cervical cannula for hysterosalbingogram. Hysterosalbingogram, which is an investigation to assess to hysterosalbingogram to assess the uh, tubal patency and uterine cavity evaluation. Iris spatula to take vaginal with the square, with the square end, and cervical, ex-cervical with the round end, cervical cytology specimen. Mention the four basic investigation of infertile cabal. The four basic investigation of infertile cabal include Male investigation for, for semen analysis, tubal patency for hysterosalbingogram, ovulation by midluteal progesterone assay, and peritoneal for peritoneal factor of infertility with laparoscopy. And so, we cannot 
diagnose a case or a couple with unexplained, unexplained infertility except after doing these four invest basic investigation, semen analysis, histosabingogram, midlateral progesterone, and laparoscopy, and all are free. So the, the, this couple is unexplained infertility. So the basic, four basic investigation, four of, infer, of infertility couple are semen analysis for the male, histosabingogram for tubal patency, Midlateral progesterone assay, which is normally uh, more than 10 mg nanogram per deciliter or more. And lastly, uh, laparoscopy to evaluate the uh, uh, tube ovarian relationship mainly, tube ovarian relationship and pelvic peritoneum mainly. The main objective of do doing diagnostic laparoscopy. In cases of infertility, searching for the cause of infertility, is assessment of the tube ovarian relationship and peritoneal factor of infertility and diagnosis of endometriosis. The optimal vacuum power used in vacuum extractor are this is the optimal, this is the optimal, not the maximum, is. 6 kilogram over square suction power over square centimeter so, uh, 0.6 kilogram 0.6 kilogram this is the optimal while the maximum is a 0.8 milli kilogram 0.8 kilogram so the optimal Vacuum power used in vacuum extractor is 0.6 kilogram over square centimeter, while the maximum allowed allowable allowed power vacuum power is 0.0.8 kilogram over square centimeter. The vacuum extractor is used. In the following fetal presentations is used in the following fetal presentations any cephalic presentation wrong it cannot be used in face presentation cannot be used in brow presentation vertex representation okay it, it is used in vertex representation Frank bridge is not used for Frank bridge. Shoulder not. None of the above. No. It is the correct answer is P. It is used in vertex representation. Vertex presentation. When the head is flexed, fully flexed, or with partial deflection in occipital posterior position. All the following are prerequisites for Vintos. Application except one full cervical dilation, engaged head, vertex presentation, intact fetal membrane, and term fetus. The intact fetal membrane is a contraindication for Vintose application. The membrane should be ruptured, so the exception is D. All of the following. Are complications of the forceps except one uterine rupture uterus may cause a uterine rupture vaginal tear you uh, forceps may cause vaginal tear facial fetal facial palsy forceps can cause fetal facial palsy kephalematoma forceps cannot cause kephalematoma If this is wrong, the correct is D. The following are complications of forceps except cephalomatoma. Cephalomatoma is a characteristic of 
in those this is g the standard investigation to assess the patency of the fallopian tube is ultrasound evaluation no CT scan no histocelbilgram yes hysteroscopy yes it can assess patency but by public test but it is not the standard premise interest no so the correct answer is C your trine perforation is possible complication of the following procedures except your trine soundings yes trine sounding can cause the trine perforation cervical yes can cause cervical can cause your trine perforation the dilatation of the cervix when it is not in, in, in not in line with the cervical trine canal it can cause cervical perforation or uterine perforation endometrial perforation it, it can cause transvaginal ultrasound it, it, it never it is impossible to cause uterine perforation with the transvaginal ultrasound because it is not an intrauterine procedure surgical evacuation it can cause the trend perforation so the, this exception is transvaginal ultrasound so the correct answer is d we come to a revision of anatomy and embryology all of the following sources structures are the derived from the Mullerian duct except one uterus and cervix are Mullerian fallopian tube is Mullerian the vulva is not Mullerian most of the vagina is Mullerian vagina is Mullerian except the lower third so the correct answer is C is the vulva the vulva is derived from urogenital sinus urogenital sinus and so the lower fourth or the lower third or lower fourth of the vagina are derived from urogenital sinus. The gubernaculum is the, the embryologic source of gubernaculum is the embryologic source of round ligament and broad ligament. No, it is source of round ligament, but not broad ligament. Round ligament and the cardinal ligament, no. Round ligament also only, not current ligament. Round ligament and the ovarian ligament, yes, it is the source of round ligament and ovarian ligament. Because the gubernaculum is attached to the lower bore of the gonad, when whether in male, it takes the gonad in through the internal inguinal ring through the inguinal canal to the bottom of the scrotum under the effect of testosterone while in female it, it is not uh, there is no uh, testosterone and so the gubernaculum it is 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 uh, forms the ovarian ligaments and the round ligaments So the, the correct answer is C. Cross match the male counterpart with the correct female structures. The ovary, ovary ligament and round ligament, just we mentioned it as the, the gubernaculum. Uh, Gartner's duct, vagina, parsoring duct, or, or parsoring glands, labia minora, labia majora, uh, clitoris, urethral, urethral and paraurethral glands. Uh, the uh, the sebaceous uh, testis, uh, uh, duct, uh, uh, vas difference, ductus difference, and so on. The correct is. Here, the ovary counterpart is the testis. Ovarian ligament 
and round ligament is the governaculum testis. Gartner's duct, ductus difference. Vagina is a prostatic utricle. Prostatic utricle. Bartholing gland, bartholing uh, pubo urethral gland of the male. Pubo urethral gland is a counter part of bartholing gland. Labia minora is a benign urethra. Labia majora is scrotum. Clitoris is a counterpart in the penis. Urethral and paraurethral gland is a prostatic gland in male. And so this is an important this as is an important table to show you the female part and its counter male part. All of the following are true about the vagina except it is a fibromuscular tube, yes, it is a fibromuscular tube. The posterior wall is longer than the anterior, yes. The posterior vaginal wall is 10 cm and the anterior vaginal wall is about 7 cm. The its axis is perpendicular with the axis of the cervical canal. Axis of the vagina is perpendicular to the axis of the cervical canal. This is what's called version. Version. Anti-version. The uterus is usually normal. The uterus is usually anti-verted. This means the axis of the cervix is vertical or perpendicular to the cervical A, to the vaginal axis. So this is a correct. The other is flexion. The uterus over the cervical canal. The axis of the uterus over the axis of the cervical canal. It is rich in mucus gland, secreting gland. No. The vagina, the vagina is devoid of mucus cervical gland. And so the vaginal discharge is from the cervix and the vulval uh, glands and from the transudation because the vagina is devoid of mucus secreting glands. The anterior wall supports the bladder, yes. So the, the incorrect or the false statement is D. The train artery is a branch off from pudendal artery, no. Posterior division of the anterior iliac artery, no. Ovarian artery, no. Anterior division of the hypogastric or internal iliac. Hypogastric is the internal iliac. It has two names, interior iliac artery or hypogastric artery. Abdominal aorta, yeah, no. So the uterine artery is a branch of the anterior division of the interior iliac or hypogastric artery. The ovarian artery is a branch of the aorta. Pudendal, no. Posterior division, no. Uterine artery, no. Anterior, no. Aorta, yes. It is a division of the aorta. We come to problem based learning or clinical cases. Let us read the data to know how to read. The data in case uh, uh, case solving. These are <clears throat> some advice. After careful reading of the proposed case, putting in mind that every given data is put to direct you toward or away from the most likely diagnosis. Follow the following scheme. Rearrange the given data according to the, its, their significance. Put some differential diagnosis. Some of them will be excluded from the given data. The most likely diagnosis 
remains unsub and opposed by the data given the next step when asked for it may be the most important investigation to confirm the diagnosis or the first choice treatment so these are the pearls of advice I give you when you are solving the commentary case commentary exam in MBD examination or in PPL learning you should follow these important advices we come to the first case a fourth gravida third bar 30 year old lady undergoes a rapid vaginal delivery three hour labor of a three kilogram male infant over an intact perineum during labor she is noted to have mild variable decelerations that increase 20 beat per minute above the baseline heart rate at delivery the male at delivery the male baby has a guard score of 8 at 1 minute and 9 at 5 minutes slight lengthening of the code after 25 minutes along with a small gush of blood bear the vagina as the placenta is being delivered a shaggy reddish mass is noted at the enteritis around the placenta what is the most likely diagnosis what is the most likely complication to occur in this patient so she is a multi para the baby is average weight it was cephalic there was decelerations variable deceleration so the main problem here important data is a deceleration so there was there was a deficient placental perfusion but this placental perfusion didn't affect much the neonatal condition lengthening slight lengthening of the cord occurs after 25 minutes along with a small gush of, of blood bare vagina so there was no there was no placental separation there was no accidental hemorrhage because it the placenta is separated after 25 minutes 25 minutes as the placenta is being delivered a shaggy reddish mass is noted at the introitus around the placenta this shaggy reddish mass is acute uterine inversion most likely complications postpartum collapse or hypovolemic shock postpartum collapse and hypovolemic shock A 49-year-old woman complains of a regular of a regular menses 
over the past six months. Feeling of inadequacy, vaginal dryness, difficulty sleeping, and episodes of warmth, sweating at night. On examination, her blood pressure is 120 over 70 millimeter mercury, heart rate 9 beat per minute, and temperature is 37 degrees Celsius. Her thyroid gland is normal to palpation. The cardiac and chest examination revealed no abnormality. The breasts are symmetric without masses, without masses, sorry, or discharge. Examination of the external genitalia does not reveal any masses. What are the most likely diagnoses of this case of inadequacy? Worms, episodes of worms, hot, hot flushes, and sweating at night? What are, what is your single most important investigation to confirm diagnosis? This is a, a climacteric state a hot flashes or climacteric state or perimenopausal state. The most diagnostic step is serum follicle stimulating hormone, which will be over threefold the lab, the lab uh, upper limit, or 40 million international rate per milliliter to diagnose uh, 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 to diagnose menopause or ovarian failure. However, in age 49, it is in menopause in its climacteric age. Case 3. A 30-year-old fifth gravida, fourth bara, pregnant 32 weeks, complains of significant pratrate vaginal bleeding she denies uterine contractions, leak, leakage of fluid or trauma. There is no uterine contractions, leakage of fluid or trauma. So this blood, fresh blood, is causeless and painless. The patient states that four weeks previously she experienced the same vaginal spotting and this so the complaint is recurrent painless causeless and recurrent following the sexual intercourse on examination the blood pressure is 110 over 60 and pulse is 80 feet per minute, temperature 37 degrees Celsius. The heart and lung examination are normal. The abdominal examination revealed the abdomen lax and not tender. Fetal heart rate 140 to 150 feet per minute. What is your next step? Ultrasound to confirm placenta localization which is mostly placenta previa. When you diagnose placenta previa, you should partially full the urinary bladder. This will clarify the ultrasound image and also stretch the placental area of attachment and know its relation to the cervix by contrast against the partially full platter. The placenta previa is 
diagnosed if the lower border of the placenta is within 3 cm from the center of the internal cervical os. What is the most likely diagnosis? Placenta previa. What will be the long-term management of this patient? This patient is 32 weeks. The hemoglobin concentration should be corrected or optimized. According to the type of the placenta, the management is determined. Next step is ultrasound, most likely like placenta previa, long term expectant treatment as long as breathing is not excessive, cesarean section at 36 to 37 weeks if indicate what are the indications of cesarean section in cases of placenta brevia the indication of cesarean section are previous scarred uterus by cesarean section or not placenta is centralis or marginalis posterior Placenta is incomplete centralis. Severe attack of vaginal bleeding, what uh, affecting the general condition of the patient, or whatever the type of the placenta. Presence of other indication for cesarean delivery. These are the indications of cesarean section in cases of placenta previa. A 50-year-old fifth gravida forced para woman complains of postcoital spotting over the past six months. Postcoital spotting. Most recently, the complaints she complains of a malodorous vaginal discharge. She is cigarette smoker for the past 20 years. All her deliveries were vaginal and uncomplicated. On examination, the blood pressure is 120 over 80. Temperature 37 degrees Celsius. Blood pulse is 80 beat per minute. Chest and heart examination are within normal. The abdomen reveals no masses, ascites, or tenderness. Pelvic examination reveals normal. External genitalia, speculum examination reveals a 3 cm exophytic lesion of the anterior lip of the cervix. No other masses are palpated. What is your next step? Biopsy from the cervical mass because this is mostly cancer cervix. Because it starts with postcoital bleeding for six months which is neglected the patient is heavy similar cigarette smoker for uh, 20 years foul smelling vaginal surcharge meaning that there is infection of this exovetic mass so the next step is biopsy from the cervical mass what is most likely diagnosis cervical carcinoma cervical carcinoma case 5 a 24 year old second gravida second bara woman delivered vaginally 10 months ago her delivery was complicated by postpartum hemorrhage requiring Heritage of the uterus and blood transfusion of two, of two units. She complains of amenorrhea, secondary amenorrhea, after her delivery. She was not able to breastfeed, so there, no, there is no 
postpartum breastfeeding, no lactation. She, uh, she denies taking medications or having headaches or visual disturbances. Her pregnancy test is negative. What is the most likely diagnosis? Severe bleeding, postpartum bleeding, followed by secondary amenorrhea, and inability to lactate is a diagnosis for Sheehan syndrome. Sheehan syndrome. Pituitary ischemia. What are the complications that are likely with this condition? Pituitary ischemia resulting in Sheehan syndrome will affect all the hormones or the trophic hormones of the pituitary, including adrenocorticotrophic hormones and so on. We read the answer, model answer. Most likely diagnosis anterior pituitary necrosis, Chihan syndrome. Asherman syndrome is also a probable diagnosis that may result from curettage. However, it is excluded as the most likely diagnosis by the inability to lactate. Other complications that are likely with this condition is anterior pituitary insufficiency such as hypothyroidism, adrenocortico, adrenocortical insufficiency also due to deficiency of adrenocorticotropic hormone and so there is no production of cortisol. This patient should take replacement for thyroid for cortisone uh, and for uh, gonadotropins. Case 6. A 3 year old Paris woman notes a watery breast discharge of 6 months duration. Her menses have been somewhat irregular. She denies a family history of breast cancer. The patient had been treated previously with radioactive iodine for Graves' disease. Currently, she is not taking any medication. On examination, she appears in good health. The blood pressure 120 over 80 and pulse is 80 beat per, beat per minute. The breasts are symmetric and without masses. No skin retraction is noted. No adenopathy is appreciated. The pregnancy test is negative. What is the most likely diagnosis? What is your next step? The most likely diagnosis is galactorrhea due to hypothyroidism. Galactorrhea due to hypothyroidism. The next step is to check serum prolactin and TSH levels. A 40 years this is a case 7. A 40 year old multiparous woman complains of menorrhagia of 2 year duration. She states that several years ago a doctor had told her that her uterus was enlarged. Her, uh, her records indicate that one year ago she underwent a DNC, a DNC with a tissue showing benign pathology. She takes ibuprofen without 
relief of vaginal bleeding on examination her blood pressure is 130 over 80 heart rate 80 beat per minute and temperature 37 degree celsius the heart and lung examination are normal the abdomen reveals a lower abdominal midline irregular mass on pelvic examination the cervix is displaced anterior an irregular midline mass approximately 18 weeks size seems to move in conjunction with the cervix no adnexal masses are palpated her pregnancy test is negative her hemoglobin is 9 gram per deciliter leukocytic count is 10 thousand bare cubic millimeter and platelet count is 160 thousand bare cubic millimeter what's the most likely diagnosis fibroid what is the investigation required ultrasound what is the First choice treatment, abdominal hysterectomy. Case 8. 20 year old primary gravida, pregnant 30 weeks. She has severe preeclampsia with se several blood pressure estimations of 160 over 110 millimeter mercury and 4 plus proteinuria she denies headache or visual disturbances she notes a two day history of severe epigastric pain The patient platelet count is 130,000 bare cubic millimeter or milliliter. Hemoglobin is 13 gram per deciliter. It's got 2,000. The normal is less than 35. International bare milliliter. Shortly after admission and received intravenous magnesium sulfate, and was induced with extocin, she delivered vaginally. Two hours after delivery, the patient complains of sudden onset of severe abdominal pain and has a syncopal attack. The patient is found to have a blood pressure 80 over 60, severe hypotension, distended abdomen, and heart rate of 140 beat per minute with a 3D pulse. What is the most likely diagnosis this patient has subcapsular hematoma. This is this was the cause of severe epigastric pain. After collapse, we diagnose rupture of this hepatic capsule with internal hemorrhage. 
the next step is surgical management of this capsular hemorrhage. Most likely hepatic rupture. Rupture of the hepatic of the hematoma. Some capsular hematoma delivered. Hepatic rupture. Next step is emergency. La expiratory laparotomy and blood product replacement to save the patient life. A 31 year old nullagravid woman presents with a history of infertility of two years. Duration she states that her menses began at the age of 12 and occurs at a 28-day interval. A biphasic basal polytemperature chart is recorded. Hesusabendiogram shows patent tubes and normal uterine cavity. Her husband is 34 years old and is, his semen is normal. What is the most likely etiology? What is uh, your next step? There is a two year infertility. Menses began at age of 12. Regular. Biphasic potential is a recorded normal, his gram is normal, hair, husband, the tubes are normal. This is laparoscopy is the next step. However, endometriosis may be the cause of infertility, but the, the data is deficient to direct us toward this diagnosis. It should be diagnosed by laparoscopy. The last case, case 10, a 23-year-old second gravida, primary para, pregnant, 29 weeks, complains of 12-hour history of colicky, right, lower abdominal pain, and nausea and vomiting. She denies diarrhea or eating stale food. She has a history of an 8 centimeter ovarian cyst and otherwise she has been in good health. She denies dysuria or fever and has no surgeries. Her vital signs include blood pressure 100 over 70, pulse 1.5, 105 beat per minute, respiratory rate 12 per minute, temperature 37 degrees Celsius. On abdominal examination, lower abdomen, the hair power sounds are hypoactive. The fetal heart rate or fetal heart sound are 140 over 1 or to 150 beat per minute. The abdomen is tender in the right side of the abdomen with significant involuntary gardening. 
the cervix is closed. What is the most likely diagnosis? Complicated ovarian cyst, complicated by rupture or torsion. What is the best treatment of this complication? If the complication is torsion, it should be untwisted by laparotomy or laparoscopy. Laparotomy is preferred due to 29 week pregnancy because insufflation and manipulation with the laparoscopic instruments are is a difficult in such case. Thank you very much for your attendance and I hope you, these uh, uh, lectures or this revision is useful for you and may Allah bless you all. Wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.